Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I am from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be doing our last video on Omron slash Yescava V1000 drive where we're going to be looking into how to control the drive's frequency with two push button up and down and we're also going to be looking at how to set up multi-frequency so if you haven't seen the last two videos that we, which we made where we run the drive in a remote mode with two or three wire control and also potentiometer that is uh, with the end uh, the video before that is going to be um, was the drive when we run the drive in uh, local mode and plus the commissioning. All both of those videos are going to be in li in, a, in the link in description below, and also all the related manuals and parts and things like that, and also some other videos that I think would benefit. Also going to be in description below. So definitely check it out. So before we get started, as usual, IGS Electronics is buy and sell industrial parts. So if you're looking to buy, get in touch. If you're looking to sell, get in touch as well. So without further ado. Let's get started. Alrighty, now the wiring is done. The first thing we're going to be looking at is how to control the frequency with a two buttons. And the station we're going to be using here is uh, this one, uh, where we are uh, we kept our uh, two um, uh, three wire control, and with this and that button, with two bo both black buttons, we'll be going frequency up and down. And the way it's done regarding when it comes down to wiring, as the three wire control has been set. If you haven't seen, uh, uh, don't know how we got to that three wire control. You haven't seen the last video. That video is going to be in the description below where it shows you how to do that. So the wiring again, the, the SC cable comes to the stop button. No, sorry, the SC cable, got, SCK cable comes to the, with the 10. It comes to the stop button, goes through the stop button, and it sort of sends the power to all the switches. And then according to all the inputs are we are going to be using, like start's going to go to uh, S1, uh, stop is stop in here, goes back to uh, S2, and then that one, uh, that one goes to, uh, it's depending which input you're using, but I'm using S3 and S4 for my up and down button. So uh, for that to happen, there's a couple of things we're going to need to do, which is we have to do a bit of programming. And to do, oh no, I forgot to mention as well, it's going to be our trusty e-stop is still there. So again, if you haven't seen the last, uh, haven't seen how we've done that, so please check out that video uh, what we did last time. And the program we're going to need to do there's there is options as you can see in here. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. As you can see, we got the six inputs, and uh, it, it, the S5 because S5 has been pre-programmed uh, to zero, which uh, which cannot be actually used to enter uh, to change to get other uh, other functions on it because it is sort of reverting some of the inputs in, uh, in there to work for three hour control. So S5 we cannot use. So the, what we can use is S3, S4 and S6. So any of them uh, cables or whatever the, we would call it, any of those inputs you can use to, to change to up and down. And to do that, if you go, if you go for the H1 uh, setup, which is gonna be Let's go for the H1, it's kicking the and doesn't jump to the H. H is where you program all your inputs. H1 group is where you uh, program your inputs. You stay in, a, in there and H1 obviously goes for S1, S2, S3, and then so go on to all the way to the six. So uh, remember, five you cannot change because five has been uh, pre-programmed to do the directional control for the drive. So we leave the five alone, but you can still have a room for if that is if you are using three wire control like I do. If you don't, if you're not using three wire control, of course you can use S5 for that for options and then with the control and select the switches and things like that. Uh, but for our uh, demonstration, we are going to be using we're going to be reprogramming S3 and S4. So we're going for S3 and S4. So S3. If you if you enter, I already have done that. So uh, I'll show you that if you see the in the in this. Uh, this way, this way, here we go. In the paper, you see that the up command is 10 and down command is 11. So we sort of need to change those numbers to those, uh, the, those inputs to those numbers. So that's what I exactly have done in here. And if you do the, if once you, once you change one of these numbers to 11, the line will pop off in the end. And I shall show you that now. So if I change that, let's just change that to zero. See, alarm goes on. It's basically saying you have set one of the one of the cables to do up up uh, frequency, but now I don't know how do I get down. So it's just flashing an alarm to you. You need to fix that. So that's exactly what we do by entering, going up, and as you can see, alarm disappears. Now it says, okay, I've got uh, up and down. 
good, I'm ready to go. And if that uh, is pretty much set to go. And that's pretty much all we need to do for this uh, setup. So the wiring I already showed you and how that works and then and, 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 uh, reprogramming to uh, three and a four. You can, uh, you can still use a S6 as well for something if you wish to. There is huge, and I mean, as I showed last week, a huge amount of things you can do with these inputs. It's like a bloody computer. Well designed, well organized. I like it. And there's another thing what I, which I did for, forget to mention in uh, in uh, last video. I'm not sure I'm able to find it. But there's a parameter in one of the, I can't remember parameters. I'll, I'll find it in a minute and I'll show you that parameter. Where you can actually, they, they, the drive has a pre presets, pre-selected, pre-selected, -se, pre pre-programmed uh, programs that you can enter and sort of uh, do all the, all the setup for you already. I'll show you that in a minute. But because we already done that and then and, and, uh, three wire control, we already done that as well. So the only thing is left to do, we can let's check it out how that works. So uh, here's a motor. So, uh, so if you press the, st press the start button, nothing is happening. So the drive, every time you stop the drive, it will go be going to a uh, uh, back to the zero frequency. So then, then, which one is up? This one? Yeah, then with the button, it's really cool if you don't want to use a potentiometer. It's very really good. You can control speed pretty accurately. Look at that, then it changes. So the, so just by small touch, you can change very small amounts of frequency if you wish to. So buttons work really, and by closing it, it goes really quickly up or down. So more you can do a little bit at a time. So, and when you stop, the, he uh, removes uh, the frequency back to zero. There is a parameter in there, that, which I, I haven't looked into finding it. And uh, so we, there is definitely a parameter you can uh, make uh, sure that the frequency stays if you wish to do that. I will see if I can find it. If not, then unfortunately you're going to be on your own to dig through the manuals to find it. But that's pretty much how you can control the frequency with up and down buttons with 3 wire control and obviously our trusty Easterpy thing in here. So having done that, so let's have a look at how to set up multi-frequency. Alrighty, before we get started with multi-frequency, I quickly show you the one I mentioned before regarding presets, sort of uh, like uh, what uh, Siemens are using it, they call it as a macro, but they, 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 they only started using this recently, but it uh, looks like the Yaskawa has been using that for bloody years now. So you can then just see down here, if you go for the uh, parameter A1-06, you can have like an application presets down there, it's like water pumps, conveyors, exhaust, blah, blah, blah. If you select one of those, he will pretty much preset all the parameters for you, and then you just follow the wiring and you'll be good to go, if you wish to go that route. So I thought I'd show you that, just in case you would like to know. When it comes down to multi-frequency, we actually need to do some changes. So I'm going to be using the same station that we just did. And I'll be still using the three wire control and uh, purely because bah, it just holds the, holds the uh, uh, enable button for me. So it uh, allows me to click the buttons uh, uh, to, to select whatever the frequency I want to work with. Uh, don't forget, you don't have to do that. So usually you would have select the switches in here, but the reason I'm using uh, these three buttons in here, so I can sort of demonstrate to you what they, what, how, how the combination system works when you do set these things up. And in the back of the wiring, Everything stays the same as we just did for the 3-wire control. It's just now that these three uh, 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 normally open contact, they are returning back to S3, S4 and S6. And don't forget, I don't use, I cannot use the S5 because S5 is being pre-programmed for a 3-wire control and that is for the direction of the motor. And the one thing we need to do, we need to change those uh, S3, S4 and S6 to accept multi-frequency and to do that just jump to the parameters, uh, go to the H and according to the group, uh, you go for the H1 group and you go to, we're going to be, uh, we, S1, S2 is taken so we start from S3, I've already done that so I set the frequency uh, one point in here. They're sort of, uh, they're sort of working the groups, if I show you, it looks literally like that. It surely works as a combination. 
in here, as you can see down there, to achieve the frequency too. The, the, the main frequency, the frequency, the, the set frequency, that cannot be changed uh, and uh, that will not work as, as, as a standard. So the sort of the first first uh, step speed frequency one is actually going to be called a class as a frequency two. Sort of a bit of a confusing, but you can get the gist. And it sort of shows you how to achieve a one frequency, two frequency, three, the, the, the four, five, six, and it sort of tells you that. So what numbers needs to be closed, and then uh, what H uh, for inputs has to be used to achieve that kind of frequency. So uh, for us, we can program in three. Uh, frequency points you can do four by the way the four is very confusing so the free preset frequencies works from th three uh, three four and five but the next one the fourth uh, in the input that you want to program is actually going to be 32 so you need to select one of these uh, uh, yeah let's quickly show it on the paper one of these inputs as 32 because if you go down here it says down here to achieve frequency 10 you need to have three and 32 be closed. So that's pretty, pretty much mainly is if you go above, I think seven, seven frequencies you can achieve with the three, just three points, but 16 uh, frequencies you can achieve with the four points. Sort of self-explanatory how you join things together. So as you can see down here, I already pre-changed everything. That's already done. And then I did the sixth one as well. And, uh, and to set your frequencies, uh, I just shouldn't have done that. So your frequencies, you need to go for D group parameters. In here, as you can see, my, that's my base. That's just basically not going to allow the frequency to go any higher than that. And then uh, if you go for the 2, I set that to uh, 10 hertz. 3, set that to 20 hertz, and so on. So it sort of uh, uh, allows me... This is where you pretty much uh, are able to set up all your uh, frequencies, so which, you, which ones you want to use. and what kind of frequencies you want to use. And in many, many applications, you're probably gonna need about five or six frequencies. Maybe you're gonna need 16, who knows? This is it, you can use the drive and you can pretty much do that fairly easily. And how that works for the 3 wire control, because what you need to do to acti ac activate the multi-frequency, you must have a some sort of S1 and S2, or whatever, whichever direction you are going, if it's depending on what you're using, 2-wire control, 3-wire control, you have to have enable one of the one of the run signals. So I'm going to activate and run forwards with my 3-wire control in here. So when I click that, that 3-wire control now, that drive is in on position. It's pretty much waiting for the selection of the frequency. And by clicking the frequency, as you can see down there, the, third, the second frequency is 10 hertz. The third frequency is 20 hertz. And uh, I think that's fourth, I can't remember which frequency is that. It'll be uh, 40. And if I uh, want to go further, you have to start doing the groups together, which I already showed you on the paper. So by selecting that and that, that will give me 30. So that, that will give me 50. So that's pretty much, that is the gist. I'm not sure it's that being programmed in. No, I haven't done that one. So if the frequency has not been set and you have uh, pushed the buttons, to select uh, that frequency so to run and if there's nothing in the in the data in the, in the drive the motor is just not going to run so uh that will be it when it comes down to regarding the the uh, multi-frequency and uh, don't forget to use your e-stop just in case which i already show you how to use that and that hopefully that regarding the up and down uh, control the frequency and multi-frequency what we did in this video is helping you out to get what you want to get and uh, other than that, uh, that will be it for this drive. I'm sort of going to wrap it up now. So they, these are the most common uh, control systems out there for, for, for the drives. Obviously, there's millions of more you can do with it because that drive is pretty much as a bloody computer. But for the main things, uh, for the standard, what we uh, what's generally out there, that should be just sufficient enough for you to achieve what you want to do. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you like the video, please like. If you dislike the video, dislike, comment below. Any questions, definitely ask uh, in comments below. And uh, please subscribe if you like what we do in this channel. And again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next video.